to call the uh, parish workshop to order. Mr. Lucky, we need you to sit in your seat right now. Where are you? Get over there. Come on. From the president. Oh, he's he's with this is a workshop. Come on here. <laughs> See, I didn't do like that. I didn't do like that. Now, Miss Baker never hollered at us, though. I didn't do you like that. New sheriff in town. You know, I always said she was the nicest commissioner. <laughs> yes, yes, she is. Well, well, maybe John's the meanest. I'm just kidding. You're, you're the median? John's not the meanest. I'm not mean. What are you talking about? Am I mean? Right. Uh, you you want said somebody I was the meanest. Uh, Mr. Clark? Turn everybody's head, baby. Go ahead and go. Oh, I'm ready. Dominic Johnson, Williams, Lynn. Here. 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 Present. Here. 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 Okay. Um, we'll let um, Commissioner Epperson say, well, excuse me, let's back up. Commissioner Epperson will say the Pledge of Allegiance, and uh, Commissioner Bowman, you, you lead us off with invitation, please. Yes, sir. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we come with bow heads and humble hearts. Lord, thank you for this wonderful day you've allowed us to be a part of. God, I ask that you just allow all of our thoughts and everything to be productive and pro pro progressive in your word and in your sight, God, and help us to be able to remember what we're here for, and that's to represent all the citizens of this great parish. Yes. It's with these other blessings we ask and think in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's raise the flag. All military and veterans, hand to brow salute. All others, hand over heart. Repeat the pledge in unison. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What you have to say today? What day? You got somebody to bring you home? Okay, uh, Mr. Clark, next item. Are there any agenda additions? I see none. If anybody who wishes to address the commission need to be the must fill out a comment card and forward it to myself or the clerk of the commission. Uh, comments will be limited to three minutes. Next item, Mr. Clark, please. Seeing no cards, we move to visitors. Ms. Liz Swain, Director of Downtown Development Authority. Update on downtown Can you give us your name and address before you start, Ms. Swain? Absolutely. Liz Swain, 2102 Southern Avenue, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71104. It is great to be here today. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Very much appreciate being here, and I love being able to update you on what's going on in downtown Shreveport because we have so much happening downtown. I'd like to thank Commissioner Dominic for allowing me to come down today. Let's make sure that our technology works. I love this quote. You can't be a suburb of nothing. This is a former Indianapolis mayor saying that uh, you have to have a strong core of your area, a strong downtown, and then everything else is made strong because of it. And we definitely see that. If we have a strong downtown, we'll have a strong South Shreveport. We'll have a strong North Caddo. Everything radiates out from a great, strong downtown. This is a wonderful view of downtown. I call it downtown on high. Downtown, you know, is our symbolic, managerial, cultural focal point of our community. And downtown rocks. Every day downtown, Monday through Friday, we have 16,000 people who work in the downtown buildings. And you know that downtown is the seat of our government. Apparently don't have enough going on on my hands. The seat of our courts, the seat of our government, the seat of our finance, our entrepreneurial entities, the arts, history, festivals, and fun, it is all happening in downtown Shreveport. And we've got a lot of success stories that I'm ex extremely <coughs> excited to tell you about. This is the great Robinson Film Center. Those of you who've been to Abbey Singer's Bistro, you can sit out and look at uh, Texas Street, our ceremonial promenade, and you can take a look at some of the historic buildings and the stories of what has made us what we are today. We've got tremendous amount of interest in our downtown. The thing that you're seeing across the country and around the world is something called a mega trend. People returning to downtown to the urban core. We're seeing a tremendous number of buildings in downtown changing hands. Historic rehabilitations are happening all over downtown with the uh, 
the help of historic tax credits and the Louisiana legislature. Residential, there is a strong need for residential in downtown. You know, with all those people who we have working downtown, we have fewer than 600 places to live in our downtown. And of those 600, 80% are affordable housing. So we have a real need for market rate apartments. A number of people want to live downtown. We are having to turn them away. There is no room at the inn. Shreveport Common, which is something that the commission has been working very hard on, and we Cattle do appreciate. <laughs> yes, the Caddo Common. The commission has been doing a tremendous amount to make that a reality, and we're seeing that take place. And then Cohab. The commission has also been uh, supportive of Cohab, and that is an economic development opportunity for us. It's uh, creating an opportunity for millennials to return to this area to do networking and to make a life for themselves. One of the things that we're seeing as we're talking about global trends is those young people, those millennials, they are not going places for a job. You know, when I grew up in North Florida, I moved to Shreveport for a job. I know a number of you have moved different places for a job. Millennials nowadays aren't moving someplace for a job. They're moving someplace because it's a place they want to be, and then they're creating the job. So we have to be that place they want to be, and they'll come here and they will then create the job. So that's why a strong downtown is hugely important. Millennials love downtown. They love the excitement and the vibrancy and the vivacity of a downtown. Here are some of the buildings that we are seeing worked on, rehabilitated, and repurposed in our downtown, and it's a number of them. And this is just a few of the buildings that we're seeing activity in right now. Another couple are the Johnson Building and the Petroleum Tower, talking about that uh, great residential need that we have downtown. So with all the good going on, what causes sleepless nights? Well, for me, <laughs> we've got a few challenges that we do need to conquer, and to do that conquer, and I need your help, and I need the help of the city council, and I need the help of the citizens. And one of the things that we need your help on is all these erroneous stories and beliefs that get started out there. I want to tell people, seriously, you really believe that? You still believe that after all these years of us proving to you otherwise? But it's still something that we have to work together as partners on. The most recent, obviously, was the, uh, the report that was picked up nationally about us having the slowest growing economy yeah. in the country. And there are so many reasons why that is incorrect. And there are so many reasons how uh, we should have responded and maybe could have responded uh, a little bit better on that. But we need to be aware when those come out that we need to be able to respond quickly and decisively. <coughs> Lack of parking, I know it's not sexy and I know it's not you know, wonderful and cool and all that, but it really is an economic development issue. When you look at your buildings downtown, and you see so many wonderful buildings that have zero parking attached to them. The Johnson Building, the Slattery Building, the Lane Building has very little parking, the Sears Building, but throughout downtown we have these wonderful big rehabilitation ready buildings with developers waiting to put their money into that, to them and no place to park. So that is going to continue to be an issue. Finding funding. Thank you so much for what you've done to support initiatives like COHAB. COHAB truly does help create the entrepreneurs and that millennial <coughs> group that we're talking about. They have a proven track record. They have a plan of action. They have a new series called Elevate that we hope will help create the next generation of entrepreneurs. And they truly have injected new life into downtown, and they need <coughs> additional money. History is perishable. We've got this wonderful history all around us. It helped create who and what we are. We don't need to lose it. We especially don't need to lose these wonderful buildings to parking lots. And it's perishable. It can go away. And sometimes we have to intervene to prevent it from going away. We do need to work with these great organizations. This is a little group called the Norla Preservation Project, and they're interested in taking some old shotgun houses in St. Paul's Bottoms and repurposing them for retail. 
it has been a busy year over 2013 and it's going to be an even busier year in 2014 and we've got a number of initiatives on the DDA and downtown Shreveport Development Corporation side of the house and I'd love to update you we've got obviously parking improvements we're going to continue to be working with our municipalities with our developers on doing a multi-level parking garage behind the Sears building behind Southern University okay. so that we can encourage development in that part of downtown Hopefully, when the Sportran bus terminal moves to the multimodal site, we'll be able to do a multi-level parking garage in that part of downtown as well. That will open up the Slattery Building for development, the Johnson Building for development, the Lane, the Rubensteins, some other buildings. A historic District update. We're updating our entire downtown historic district, which means good things for you guys because it means the Selber Building will then be more marketable because the buyer potentially will be able to get federal tax credits, federal historic tax credits. So that's something that we're doing in partnership with the parish and we appreciate your help on that very much. Can we much. get the windows go ahead and cut in? <laughs> we're going to try very hard okay. to get that done. We've got the Shreveport Common Market Study again with a partnership with the parish and thank you all for that. We've hired a market analysis group to come in to tell us what we thought that we knew but developers needed a little bit more you know, um, objective information to show that there is the potential for that area. There's the potential for development, both residential and commercial development there. Pop-up projects, we're going to be animating some of these uh, vacant storefronts with short-term businesses to show people what it will be like to have businesses in some of these buildings that have been vacant for so long. Right. We've got a number of downtown events, uh, a number of uh, projects that we're doing, a new website, and we've got a new Downtown Shreveport Development Corporation grant for structural stability on a few of these buildings that have some dire needs that are beginning to cave in, fall in, and we hope that our first grant will go to the city for work on the Arlington Hotel. So that's what we're planning to do. I'd love to encourage all of you to connect with, uh, with us because we're out there and we're trying to spread the word as rapidly and as broadly as we can. And I absolutely thank you for your concern about downtown and for being involved and for caring enough uh, to, to want to know what's going on. And many of you have a tremendous grasp of what's going on downtown because you ask me questions that are very profound. So, <laughs> and I always have the chance to go, wow, they, they really know their stuff. So, are there any questions that you have for me now? And if not, I oh, know. Um, hang on, uh, Mr. Lynn. I have two questions. First, mm -hmm. do you have an active Facebook page? We do. It's Shreveport DDA. And you have lots of activity on it. We, you know, you have to create a. You can't be a person page. You have to be an entity page, mm -hmm. and we have about. 4,100 likes right now. Oh, good. It's good. I wish we had more interaction mm -hmm. on the page. We actually started out as a person, and for those of you who know Facebook, that's a no-no, mm -hmm. but you have a lot more interaction that way. Right. But then Facebook found us out, <laughs> and we had to switch over to an entity page. And for whatever reason, entities don't get as much interaction. And I don't know if that's how they're set up by Facebook. So to deal with that, we're doing Instagram, we're doing Twitter, we're doing blog. We have a very interactive website. So we're trying to get out there in every way that we can think of, especially the free ways. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Um, also, there's, um, I guess, a rumor mill, one of the many rumor mills that, that I want to question you about, that the metal recycling plant on 12 Mile Bayou mm -hmm. would like to relocate to another location if somebody would trade them land and that they're just looking for someone to trade land. I keep hearing that. I have not ever had a conversation That's one of my with questions. them. I have heard that there have been conversations with the city, mm -hmm. but I have never been part of those conversations. It would obviously be a wonderful thing for the downtown development district if that salvage yard and that recycling yard went away. Will you keep us up to date on that? Because I, I don't know how much land the city has. I know the parish has quite a bit. I absolutely will. And thank you for asking me that because there are at least a couple of developers who are also potentially interested in some land along Cross Bayou for some incredible developments 
and there may be some parish ownership of a couple of pieces that they might need to make that work I think uh, if Dr. Wilson can help me out on this. Don't we own the land across 12 Mile Bayou from the metal scrap yard? Okay, so we have a warehouse down there. Mm -hmm. we do. okay. That's it. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, uh, thank you for looking yes. out from a district. Yeah, I appreciate uh -huh. it. Um, Commissioner Lynch? Yes. Uh, what is the funding so highly? Is funding hey. source for the DDA? Our funding source is we were created in 1978 by an act of the legislature and we get a very small ad valorem property tax from downtown property owners okay. and that amounts to about seven hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year and then we have two professional services contracts with the city of shreveport one is for streetscape and we're the ones who keep the streets clean and swept and all of that and then the other is shreve park <laughs> right but all the money that's collected through tickets actually goes back to the city for the parking enterprise fund. So we're only paid for the employees and for the management of that contract. And then, um, Commissioner, we try to make money in other ways through grants. Uh, we won a $250,000 grant from British Petroleum for marketing downtown. And we have managed to... Uh, the Community Foundation, we got a $75,000 grant for the stability fund that we've created, a $25,000 grant for the Shreveport Common Market Study. So we're always actively looking. We try not to come to the Commission and the City Council for money because we know that you get a lot of requests for money. So we try as, as hard as we can to find, find other sources of funding. I wanted to get a copy of your presentation today, too. Absolutely. Um, and, we, and I wanted to ask, do we have any appointments on the DBA board, or is it just all city? I will send that to you. The way that the legislature set it up is that the city, the council gets two appointments. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce gets an appointment. Uh, Senator Burrell gets an appointment. Um, Representative, I'm sorry, Representative Burrell, and and it's Mother broken. Up. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the commission does Based not. Can't what, deal with a match. What is Representative Burrell's? <laughs> it's just whoever is in that state representative seat gets an appointment what, that to our board. That covers downtown. You mean? It does. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay, it does. So it's just four. four? The African American Chamber of Commerce has an appointment. The. Um, I think uh, Senator Tarver or whoever is in that office has Senate an appointment. District. Mm -hmm. okay. <coughs> and I'm trying to think who else, but no, the commission. Okay, that's six. I'll send it to you. Okay. But no, the commission does not have one. Oh, okay. That could be changed, but it would have to be changed at the legislative the level. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. Thank you. You bet. Um, Commissioner Williams, did you? I just, I just want to uh, comment on her all the fine work. Thank you. And, and to put your face of downtown is a little brighter, brighter look. I yeah. um, just want to commend you all the work that you're doing, try to make downtown the cornerstone uh, for the community. And I think when you invest in downtown, uptown, get a facelift. You are right. So yes. uh, I'm excited about the ongoing projects and as John would say, the game changing experience downtown uh, that you're bringing. And uh, don't be afraid to ask parish for money because we want to invest in worthwhile right. uh, projects we've been doing a lot of that lately yes so if you feel that something is worthwhile <laughs> we're going to make uh, downtown a more attractive place where the people can come and in return on our investment is people buying and selling sale taxes how we make money here Absolutely. in property tax so and hopefully hotel tax would be a way we make money as well one day we get it passed in the legislature but uh, to 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 share with you in your vision. When you have a vision for downtown, uh, sometimes come before and allow us. Let us take part in your vision together. Absolutely. Uh, I believe all us working together to make downtown a place. We need more family-oriented activities. Um, what do you see for family like aquariums and uh, you know downtown Shreveport? Mostly when you talk about downtown, you talk about the riverboat being the Walt Disney of Shreveport. Mm -hmm. so we need some for families and, and, and retail development. Mm -hmm. People come back and, and spend money downtown and open downtown up and 
be like a city like New Orleans and San Antonio and New Jersey. We have the potential. Absolutely. But I know you need money to do those things, so you need a plan. So hopefully our, our MPC and our uniform code that they're working on and your job and, and Shrek uh -huh. and all of us get together and try to bring downtown back and bring people back and get excited. So I'm excited about what's going on now, but I know the best is yet to come. So we appreciate what you're doing. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. I appreciate it. Commissioner Bowman? Yes, sir, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, again, piggybacking on uh, Commissioner Williams, great job. And of course, uh, I remember you back with Jefferson with the Jefferson Award. Oh, yeah. yeah Absolutely. I got one of those. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that was a big deal. Yeah, it was. So I, I always keep it my yeah. <laughs> uh, But I wanted to ask a question regarding to uh, downtown development. That's when I was uh, fired. Red River District. I got elected. Uh, do we foresee any openings or <laughs> any development in that area? Well, they have just opened a new restaurant called Fully Stacked. Okay. It's a hamburger restaurant. It's quite good. I've been there two or three times. If you like hamburgers, you will love this restaurant. It's in the old Wilson's Catfish location across from Nikki's. Of course, Cohabitat's doing very well. You know, they've moved in there and they've now got the new commercial kitchen called Cookhouse. And then they have this other thing called Lunch Counter where they're bringing chefs in three or four times a week. So Wednesday through Friday, you can go in and get different types of food, everything from Mexican to gourmet grilled cheese. Soul food. I'm sure that's coming. coming. <laughs> I'm sure that's it's coming. They've got funny. Mexican soul food. It's been very good. All right. The other spaces have seen a lot of interest, but no signed contracts. I'm sure you've heard about Kix Brooks Correct. and being interested in the old MacArthur space, and that is still being discussed, okay. but no signed I contract. So. I know. This pop-up project that we're talking about to bring business to vacant storefronts for a week or two at a time, we will probably kick that off in the Red River District. Our goal is to have every single building in the Red River District full for two weeks so people can walk down there and feel the energy and see the opportunities that could be theirs and decide that that's where they want to be or someplace downtown. <coughs> Okay, well, you answered two things. Any, well, do we have foresee any um, retail openings in the downtown area? We have a couple that we're working on, I, and I think the commission has probably been a part of this as well. There's a family dollar store that wishes to build actually a new facility over on Common Street. If you're familiar with where Mandina's is, used to be the old Monsoors by Millennium. So that would be a retail component for downtown. And we talk to other retailers. Retailers. How do they seem? Is there, are there any like challenges that that are stopping other retailers from coming to downtown? There are challenges, and one of the big challenges is it goes back to your residential component. They like for there to be feet on the street more than just eight o'clock to five o'clock Monday through Friday. Yes, ma'am. They like for there to be activity in the evenings, activity on the weekends, and. It, as we build up that residential and we have more feet, the demographics and the numbers, the traffic numbers go up, all of that goes up and it makes it more attractive to, res to the retail component. But we have had some discussions with a number of retailers who are all very interested. And the Sears building, he <coughs> intends to have the first floor retail. So there are a couple of different developers who are doing large buildings and their first floor is going to be dedicated to retail. All right. So that's a very good change. Yeah. You know, yeah. where we were in the 1940s and 50s, yeah, right. I mean, we were almost all retail, and then we became almost no retail, and now we've got to get back to that happy medium. Correct. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Yo, Ray. thank I you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Um, commissioners, if you, you just press your button, I am able to tell that the board's not working, but I have you on the board. Our next uh, commissioner is Escadet. Commissioner Escadet? I'm not going to spend all the time um, complimenting you like Commissioner <laughs> Williams did. <laughs> but I do want to disagree on my, with my friend on one thing. He said, don't be scared to ask us for money. Be scared. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always am, John. I always <laughs> am. <laughs> we don't all feel that way. <laughs> but I do, I, you, Gerald pointed out something interesting. You know, I said really years ago when you stand on this side of the river, a couple of years at the first time, fireworks festival you know fourth of july and you look 
And over here, we've got fireworks in the barn well, water shooting out of the ground in casinos. And you look across the river, and everything they've got is generating massive tax revenue. Right. And everything that we're standing on is taxpayer subsidized. Right. So we need that happy balance and, and then some. And I just want to say I appreciate all your efforts. Commissioner Epperson. I hope I didn't miss it. I had to step out on most of your presentation. What, what's the status of the Barnwell Center? The Barnwell Center is such an opportunity for us. You know it's still closed, but the city has some money for some repairs. And I was talking to Shelley Ragel just today about some opportunities for that building. You know, we don't have a fine restaurant on the river. Wouldn't that be a fabulous location? Yes. Amen. My, you my could, thoughts exactly. I visited one in Fort Worth, yes. Texas. Come on. It'll be ideal. I forget the name of it, but I'm trying to research it now. But that's exactly what I had in mind. And, be, uh, we don't access our riverfront in that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was encouraging her to let's go that direction. Okay. Well, get with me and I'll get the name of that restaurant right. in, in okay. Fort Worth that we visited. The Brazil place? Yeah, it Brazil, had the open, uh, the open top on it, yeah, like Texas the, Brazil. with the glass. Yeah, oh, was Texas, that what it was? Texas Deep Brazil. Deep okay. Brazil, yeah. Uh, yeah, That's it. out of sight. Plus, we got one better because they could do like a, 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 a terrace scene out there overlooking the river. Absolutely. Uh huh. For dining. Absolutely. Okay. And for events, it would be a beautiful location for that. That's right. Some of class here. <laughs> Leah, uh, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for your update. We always appreciate you and doing a wonderful job. Keep up the good work. Okay? I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Have thank a good you. day. Thank you. Okay, uh, next item, Mr. Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Report. Administration report. Yes. Yes, uh, President. Uh, yes. Uh, Dominic, we have uh, commissioner requests for information from the MPC. And this was made several weeks ago. Yes. And we have Ms. D. Armato here today from the NPC okay. board. Uh, okay. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, I hope I didn't scare you. Okay. And I believe uh, there were some questions uh, the commissioner wanted to ask. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Just fine. Can you give us your ad name and address for yes, you? Yes, I'm, I'm Leah DeMarteau. I'm the MPC chair, and my address is 8835 Line Avenue, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71106. Okay. Uh, you have a presentation for us? Is that what you know? Well, <laughs> I was asked to um, not. Okay. Yeah. I was asked to be here, and yes, I have some things I've written down. I don't have a formal okay, uh, okay, PowerPoint. Okay, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Like Liz did, but. Um, I guess I was asked to provide uh, the process yes, of how we are um, That's correct. Get, um, <laughs> the process the for director. the search for the executive director okay. for the MPC. Okay, go ahead. And so let me do, I'll just go through some things that we've done already and where we are. Okay. Um, on September 4th of 2013, at a regular scheduled MPC board meeting, a motion was made and seconded to appoint some members of the board to a subcommittee to, a, to search for an executive directorship um, and, to, and to nominate a, a replacement for the retiring um, executive director, Charles Kirkland. So um, three of us members were appointed at that time, Windsor Andrews, Dale Colvin, and myself. Um, so this subcommittee has met throughout the throughout the months and um, we met with um, various <coughs> job descriptions we looked at um, job descriptions um, on the uh, association the American Planning Association websites for master planners for city directors and executive directors to kind of compare where we are and compare where we're going to need to be and and to look at those different job descriptions and um, at that at that time we we got when we reviewed them all and and made up the job description for this um, position we um, actually consulted um, Miss Scott the city's attorney and um, and included Miss Jackson the HR director for the city to make sure that we did it correctly and um, accurately um, so that was all that was done 
And I just want to say that we, we this is a, a very important position. And as you all know, it's a top level position. And our main, our main goal is to um, a, obtain an individual with the education and the experience to be able to move the city forward. Um, as you all know, we're right in the middle of rewriting the unified development codes. We have a master plan implementation, implementation that's very important to the city and the growth. We're also um, wanting them to work well with the city leaders as yourself. And, um, and he or she to be able to have an effective leadership skills. So if you look at the job description, if you've seen it posted, um, we think we encompassed all of that to be able to find a good candidate. Um, this job description was approved around um, on, and asked to be posted around January 29th. It is posted on the APA site and the city website. And we ran into some um, budget constraints about putting it on other sites that the board decided to put it on. Um, so I guess this is the time to ask for money from y'all. <laughs> okay. But we, um, are, I think we're working with our budget. We're meeting actually tomorrow to look at the budget, see where we can take it and, and post it, the job description on more sites. So the process after that, that's where we are now. So the process after that, um, we are going to, um, we put a, a, a deadline for all the applicants by March 31st. Hopefully we'll have an, a, a number of applicants that we can um, choose from. And we'll look at it at that time to see if we need to extend the deadline or not. And the subcommittee then will review and narrow down the top qualified applicants. And then we would um, go to the MPC board um, to actually interview the applicants that we choose. And then um, would vote on to hire the most qualified one. And that's where, that's the process. Okay. Uh, okay. We have some commissioners that would like to ask you some questions, please. So, uh, sure. Commissioner Amperson, you're up first, please. Uh, yeah. I, I was still gathering my notes. I miss, let me say. Okay, Miss Lynch. Okay, go. next one was Commissioner Baker. Well, yeah, my question is I noticed in your presentation you did not mention that the parish, you consulted with our parish attorney or our, our human resource, nor did you mention that you tried to post this position on the parish website. Mm. So I was just concerned about that. <coughs> Or is the parish completely left out of making the decision or even having any input or doing any, anything, even posting it on our website that well, the position it, is open? As I understand it, we're, we posted it on this, the city, which is the parish. Could I be wrong mm -hmm. on that? Yes. Is yeah. it the parish, too? It's not the same. No, it's two. No, it's it's two, and you called us the city. We're not the city. We're the I, I understand that, ma'am. Yeah. Um, so we're two different is it a separate website? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then we'll put it on the parish. No, we want to, I was under the understanding it was the same or all the same website, the city, yeah, it's, it's the same as the parish, so website-wise. I know there's a difference. In Mr. Wilson, will you get with her to see uh, if we can't post that on our website, too? Yeah. And the, uh, my next question is, are you all looking for a city planner type executive director, or are you just looking for someone to just take Mr. Kirkland's place and do the things he was doing, or are you looking for someone to be a, a little higher level than what he was doing or that should be all in yes. the job descriptions i guess Is yes correct? it's in the job description and we are looking and um, we're real careful we're looking for an executive directorship position i have a copy of the um what we came up with if you would like to see it Is there any way that the commissioners can get a copy of that job description yes ma'am yeah. can, okay. can we get copies yeah. uh, yeah, if you, Todd's going to, um, our clerk. I can, I can, okay, I can read some of this to you if you'd like no, me to. No, you can just get us a okay. copy of it. Okay, to answer your question just briefly, <laughs> we are looking, somebody, when I say when experience and um, education matters, we did put at least a, a bachelor's degree, master's preferred, in some kind of field like planning or architecture or, or and I'd have to look at the job description. Um, I believe that we had at least six years, I don't have it in front of me now, at least six, six years of experience 
in a leadership role in managing people. So we're not only, um, we have to, I think we're at a point at the MPC that we need to get um, a strong leader with a lot of experience in, in, in moving the city forward with the plans that we have. So we, we made it quite, I think, quite stringent on, on that fact. Did I answer your other question? Kind of. Uh, the, uh, the, Mr. Bernstein here? The, 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 right here. Yeah, right here. Our, you want to come to the, come on, come to the mic. List that we got back from the ethics board, I think. Yes, ma'am. Is it saying yes or no? I can't really figure out if it's saying yes or no if we have, if we're able to appoint someone on that board. Um, on the resolution? Yeah. I can address what that is if you'd like me to. Yes, um, the resolution? No, no, no. We, we, our attorney here got it. Got it. Okay. Opinion for us. Uh, yes, ma'am, but that actually was directed to a different question. Committee meetings, the question what had to do with whether commissioners could be appointed to boards like NLEP or the court. Well, that's what this is. That's correct. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's not dealing with the. No, ma'am, it doesn't deal with the MPC. So you say you have an answer? It's maybe a different resolution. Mm -hmm. No. Right. Yeah, yeah. What, what she. This, this I'm trying thing. to find out about. Commissioners okay, having it is a different resolution. Could you be a quick a resolution? resolution? Yeah. There is a there was a there was a resolution made by by the parish, um, and the city. And the city, yes, it was. Um, and I, I've got the numbers if you want them, but that was made to see if they could put uh, members of the two members of the commission and two members of the city on the um, committee to search for the executive director and we, we we got the resolutions we read them as a board and after care um, after careful review we had we had some MPC members and also some other um, city officials that were concerned that we we couldn't legally subjugate our um, our authority to allow or not we don't know if we can allow or not allow this to uh, to occur so um, we asked for the the city and the parish attorney to review these resolutions and give us a legal opinion we did receive a, a written opinion back from both and they said it was actually a conflict of interest since they represent the parish and the city and the NPC and they decided it, because it was a conflict of interest that they were not going to um, they're not going to give a, a written opinion on it and they suggested that we go to outside counsel have y'all done that yet or where are we at on that yeah well what we've done is we we made up a draft um, of the letter to go to the attorney general the state's attorney general and we're going to be um, voting on it on this next meeting okay. that'll take three months attorney like general y'all not going to get a local you're not going to get a local attorney y'all actually Moving forward with getting an attorney general's opinion, is that Share what you're saying? Sit in the Hang on a second. Is that correct? I might have to have you answer this. Would an advisor? You're getting an advisory opinion from the attorney general. Correct. Your, an advisory your... opinion. Okay, Miss Baker. I'll so how how you. long is this going to be open for for applicants to apply? Right now, we have March 31st deadline. When will you get the opinion back on this resolution? Ma'am, I have no way of telling that. Hang on one second, Ms. Baker. Um, Ms. Frazier, I'd ask you, when we normally ask the Attorney General for an opinion, how long does that normally take, or can you do an expedited opinion from them? I know the ones I've always gotten, it takes anywhere from three weeks to two or three months or six months. I was about to say you can request um, you can do an expedited request I am not aware of one personally that has come back in less than 30 days so it's gonna take at least 30 days if not more that would be my opinion yes I like I said I have not personally um, known of one to come back in less than that time now my last question is, so whose hand is this position in to be chosen for right now 
It is on the subcommittee, it's executive director search subcommittee, which includes Windsor, Mr. A Windsor Andrews, Mr. Dale Colvin, and myself. NPC. It, it, that's, we're going to just go through the selection uh, of the applicants and, and, and see who, who meets these qualifications. I'm going to narrow those down and then make a recommendation to Can the NPC. Narrow the down. NPC, well, that's, that is how y'all are proceeding at this time. Yes. Is that they, the subcommittee will review the applicants, narrow it down, and then make a uh, recommendation for the NPC interviews. For three or four to do interviews. Is, what is that the way about. Mr. Kirkland was chosen? No. I wasn't. Hang on. Let's, 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 <laughs> was it, do you know? No, but I'm just saying we got everybody answering questions. Mm. So you asked her a question. She said she didn't know. You so don't do know. You know? Or who knows? Okay. Is that was Mr. Kirkland chosen like that? No, Mr. No. Kirkland. No, ma'am. I don't believe believe so, but I wasn't on the okay, MPC at the. I wasn't even living All in right, the city. Hang on one second. Yeah. Where's the desk today? Can you can you tell us how Mr. Kirkland was chosen? I think unless I'm uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Lim, at the time that the position came open, Mr. Kirkland was actually a member of the MPC board, mm -hmm. and his counterparts just elevated him to that position. Right. That is correct. Nobody on the MPC board even qualifies for this job. Well, due to recent changes in state law, they couldn't do it anyway. Okay. Okay. I don't think there's anybody that wants to anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ms. Baker, let me give you the floor back, please. I'm, I'm through. Thank you. You're through? Yes. Okay. Let's try to keep everything in order as far as asking questions. Uh, pressure button. I'll, I'll try to get to you as soon as we can. Uh, Commissioner Lynch, you were next on the board, please. ask you about the budget constraints. Oh, well, let me ask you this. This is this is the actual job description that is being uh, that has been circulated on the APA website. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let me ask you about the budget constraints. Yes, ma'am. Um, what's what's the situation there? Um, let me. I hope I brought it. Um, here's here's what when I was talking to um, the enacting executive director now Stephen Jean um, the details on how the search may have been conducted were not known at the time of budget presentation uh, preparation um, was mentioned early on by mr. Andrews mr. Andrews was the chair at that time um, was the possibility of posting with the APA and city of Shreveport both which had been accomplished the, the cost of those postings were $250. Um, then we, we were asking him to post it on different papers, different different cities' papers, and Monster, and, and, and get get it broad and and and, and uh, broad reaching. Um, so far, the preliminary estimates for newspapers were received to date were approximately 800 per paper for two-day listing. Preliminary cost was 4800 for the six papers requested. To post nationwide on monster.com for 30 days is $770 um, to view up to 100 resumes. The posting for career builders is 419 for 30. Um, and we have not, we're meeting Friday in an executive director's meeting to be able to see. We didn't have it in the budget to be able to. Um, you know that much money in the budget be able to be able to post in all those areas which I think are very necessary to get qualified applicants okay let me ask mr. Jane is you all's budget that tight well I think we just got thirty thousand dollars taken away from us so yes let me let me ask you you asking me? She asking asking Steve. Mr. Mr. She's asking Steve. She's asking Steve. Oh, I'm sorry. In the room. Did you want budget that tight? We don't have enough money to do all of that. Uh, we, we're, we were not uh, told about doing these papers until after the budget uh, process was done. We've Probably looked into it now. No so we have well, some. Well, we, I'm answering. We have some funds. Will allow us to do that up to twenty five hundred dollars, 
but it didn't get in all of the papers that the board initially wanted to do. We've looked, we've, we've uh, have a, uh, something that came in after we got with several of the papers with a very abbreviated um, ad that would direct them back to a, a URL that allows You're the full thing to be. You don't have we, five thousand dollars in your budget anywhere. No. Not in the, not without going back through a, a budget revision, we might be able to do that, but not in the series. Not in the not way. in the series where we would have to pull that those funds, and we did have thirty five thousand dollars reduced in our budget from what we submitted originally. That is that was reduced by where did, the where did you from. get that reduced from? Can you tell us? Yeah, it was a, it was specifically in the uh, executive director's uh, line item for his salary. Then that would so that comes out of the professional services area and that you know that large section of the of the of the budget. Okay. We have a contractual services area that. But your total budget is what eight hundred and some thousand dollars. Uh, a, th a million dollars. A little over a million after you add in all of the you know the fees and all that we get. And you all at the beginning of the year, and I know you know you kind of have everything kind of outlined where you want to spend it. You cannot find five thousand dollars. We were actually asked at the beginning of the year to reduce our budget by five percent when we okay, pulled our budget question. together. We had. You we all had, cannot we, find five thousand dollars in a million dollar budget. No. For, a for the top position, for a position that's probably going to pay not without to doing a budget revision, no, ma'am, not without doing a budget revision. Okay, is that I understand the, what the process is? Okay, to if you want to do a budget revision, I'm saying is the money there? I haven't researched to see that total amount. We. Mm -hmm to do a full thorough analysis to see where we can find some money. So you could probably, I, 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 I mean, you always can find it. You look hard enough, I'm but sure. I sure don't know where it is right now. Okay. I mean, we don't control you all, but I know we give some, but I, I would just kind of, I would be very disappointed if this, if the MPC board went forward with selecting a director without having done an adequate search. And of course, I know the APA is the top, you know, organization and, and naturally would, um, is probably the top place to start because that's, you know, your, your industry. Right. Uh, uh, organization, but certainly um, <laughs> that in, I, I would just hope that you all would not let that be the end of it. But not. Okay. Uh, I don't think let that's me, let me just I don't think it's going to going to. Um, uh, it's going to be difficult for for me to go back and try to explain that to to my constituents. And uh, this position is just too important. It's too important. It's too much tied to it. Uh, that has parish-wide implications for that to be it and 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 it's not going to be acceptable for me to say that you all cannot find five thousand dollars in that budget okay you know i mean if you need me to help you look for it i'll be glad <laughs> i'll find it okay ma'am um thank you let me ask um Okay, so you said the deadline was March the 31st. The draft of the opinion that's going to the, well, let me go back. The, um, the discussion about whether you all should be subjugated to the city and the parish on having uh, a representative from those bodies on the search committee, mm -hmm. was that done in an MPC meeting? Did you all vote on that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. what? What meeting was that? Because we, we were there and kind of surprised. We didn't even know that the MPC board had any questions about or, or any concerns about it until after the fact. 
Uh, so I don't, I couldn't really tell if it had been just kind of like a side conversation and you all decided to proceed or if it was actually done in an open meeting. Commissioner uh, Manchester, Steve, do you under, uh, Ms. Leah's looking, uh, do you know what date the MPC voted on that issue? You understand what she's saying? You might want to step on the front row. You might want to stay up there. Um, Commissioner Lynch is asking when did they vote and was it done in an open meeting? Well, regarding uh, the resolution that was submitted and to move forward with asking for the Attorney General's opinion. I think y'all said, or Leah, what's your last name? I was Day Marteau. Day Marteau. Um, Part of Vivian Boy? Yes. Uh, <laughs> that Leah said that they had, you're fixing the vote on uh, sending the uh, the letter to the Attorney General's on the opinion, but it, at some point it was voted and discussed that they had some issues with the resolution. It must so, have been January. It was the last meeting. To go to the Attorney General? Okay, then it must have been February. Well, or January. Well, no, I mean, uh, I guess what I'm, what I'm, let me go back before that, because we were at that meeting, I think myself, John, and Matthew, where you all kind of discussed it and said you all had gotten a letter back from our attorney and from the city attorney. I'm saying before that, when, when you all got our letters, I mean, our resolution that we wanted to have someone appointed. Uh, and then at some point, I guess the board had some discussion about um, whether. Okay, and I, I have to apologize. Usually, if it was if it happened on my watch, I would know. No, I'm <laughs> just, this was yeah, I was between asked, two right. I'm good, at, I'm two good. chairs I'm, at this I'm point. I'm really looking at Stephen. I'm I'm okay with. Um, okay. And and I'm trying to. Once I got it, my first meeting was in well, January. I'm just trying so. to understand: is that did that happen in an open meeting, and you all voted? To move forward with getting, I mean, with asking for an opinion. On that. Do you remember, Stephen? I remember being discussed in the last meeting. <coughs> right now, they actually, I think they just announced that that's what they were. They were um, as far as having an actual vote, I think. I think it was a, a discussion. Did you, could you speak? We can't hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she was still standing here, so. <laughs> Yes, th so there was a discussion. The, what the concerns that led to you all asking for an opinion was that discussed in an open meeting, or was that just kind of sidebar and let's send the parish attorney and the city attorney a letter asking if if, if that's legal? I don't recall that actually being discussed in detail in, in an open meeting. There was some we had received as soon as I, I, I had gotten both resolutions. We sent that to the, the staff, sent that to the executive committee very quickly. Okay. And then um, the executive committee had some questions uh, of staff, and, and then, then they had asked us to see if we could get uh, a legal opinion on some questions, which we then contacted both attorneys. Okay, that was my question. That. So that Why? was, that was yeah. kind of them saying, can you write them and see if that's legal? It wasn't. Yes, done it was. A, it it was wasn't a, done in an open meeting. As well. It wasn't done in an open meeting. It was, it was the. But the executive. We're talking about the the initial. Well, you're talking about the. Talking about two different issues here. Right. Talking about getting the opinion of your of the right. two attorneys. Right. Was a directive that was given to me. Okay. Then there was another discussion regarding getting a, a legal opinion. Right. So the directive came from the executive committee. Yes. Okay. Initially, just to get information regarding what legal opinion is from the two. From the two. Or later, there was a an actual uh, <coughs> discussion regarding going to get an AG opinion. It's two separate actions. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. I think that's it for my uh, for my questions. The only other uh, question I had, which has nothing to do with what we're talking about now is when the cases come before you all is there any way that the MPC <coughs> will consider uh, voting on the cases as they proceed 
as opposed to making, you know, people wait four, five, I mean, I've been there at 10 o'clock, past 10 o'clock, um, you know, before. Uh, just waiting until the end with constituents, those that were brave enough to, to stay for seven or eight hours to, are you, to are see you, what happened on their case. I mean, is that something that's set in stone or is it just that the board, how long have you been on the board? Uh, I've just been, this is my third or fourth year. That's okay. my first year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As um, chair. Is that something that's set in stone or is it just, is it up to the board to can, let me let me read yeah. say your question back so I make My sure I understand is, is do you all have to wait until the end to vote on all the cases I don't know you that vote, you know after each case or after the first five or something because it's just it, it's it, it's taxing on the you know people that want to stay there and hear what happened on their case to have to be there to you know through all the other cases and I don't, I don't know the answer, but I will check for you and let you know. Okay, I, I, I would really like to okay. know if that's something that you all can um, can address. Because, you know, sometimes it's not. Sometimes the meetings are short. Most of the time they're not. But, like <laughs> With the new UDC, long. they will be. That's right. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner Epperson. Uh, <clears throat> all of your meetings are uh, are they subject to the uh, op the uh, open meetings? Open meetings act. Will you put and the search down the subcommittee hours? for the search, ma'am. For the subcommittee for the executive. Uh, any meeting, any meeting that you have should should be. Yeah. I think if it says yes. four or more people, it is. Is that correct? Oh. It should be general. Pardon? They post all the official meetings. Okay, so uh, all the meetings that you've had regarding this issue, you have posted them in accordance with the Public Records Act. As far as open, I know, open, I'm sorry, the open meetings law. As far as I know. Okay, do you do like we do? We have to post them where on the on the door. Yes. Uh, what 24 hours prior to the meeting? Yes. Yes. I, I did ask that question and, and they said yes, 24 hours, that's what at you least 24 hours everything. prior to the meeting. Uh, even even uh, committee meetings, mm. subject to the same thing? Is that true? We don't do the committee meetings. You do. So committee meetings, when you, you really discuss, and you will be discussing, I imagine, something in behalf of the public and possibly using public dollars. So you're saying that those are not subject to the uh, open meeting club because I think don't I we have to publish all our committee meetings? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, we do. Okay. Pardon? So you so 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 you did not publish the uh, subcommittee meetings. Uh, the, the only subcommittee meetings we've had is to to write a job description so far and to get it posted. That's the only thing we've had had so far. Okay, and uh, I mean, I mean that that's nothing where you were going to discuss the uh, efficiency or the effectiveness of an individual, right? Whereas you might have to go in the executive. We haven't session. even looked at the applicants yet. Uh, I know, but you did not you did not publicize that subcommittee meeting. It's, I well, don't know. I, I wasn't I wasn't chair then, okay. and I don't know. All right. Well, do you all keep minutes of all official meetings? I I know on my watch we do, but. Prior to you, that's <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. What about the subcommittee meeting? Were minutes uh, taken there? Minutes. Sir, I don't. There. I don't have them with me. But they. You did. You do have official minutes of all. Like of when your we were looking meetings. at the job description and stuff. Any meeting that you have. I will have. I'll, I'll, I will have to ask Mr. Windsor. He was the. Um, he was the the director at that time. He was the well, chair. You all at that don't time. have a clerk like that. Does every that, that that take minutes of every meeting that you have? I believe we do. <laughs> but who, who is that, Gene? <laughs> they got someone. Steve, can you help us out? Do they have a uh, clerk that takes the minutes and do they yeah, do they post the, when they have a subcommittee meeting? Are they, is, is it is it being open to the public or are they taking minutes? No. We haven't been on these on the subcommittee meetings. Only on the official mid month meetings. Those meetings we we publish. We have minutes. Yeah, well, that's uh. 
That's so a, to answer your question directly, the subcommittees are not haven't have not been open to the public, and I don't know if there's minutes on those or not. We do on the master plan committee. We have. Well, we're not talking about the master plan committee. Uh, okay. I can I can do that. I have no problems in doing that. Uh, okay. If minutes were taken, could you all please furnish sure. me with copies? Uh, I guess Stephen, you ought to be up here. You you sitting on you you in the spot for now. So you come on back up. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Uh, did you go into an executive session relative to uh, any issues discussing the hiring of a new MPC director or the appointing of an interim director? Was there an executive session? Not about about the interim. Yes. Uh, you did go into executive. Yes, session. about the interim. Yes. Okay. And uh, let's see, Mr. Kirkland just sort of, I guess, escalated from a board member up to the position for what about thirty something years he was there. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, Twenty six. Uh, Twenty six years. Okay. Was there ever an assistant uh, executive director? No, no assistant executive director. I think historically there has been on a couple of occasions. Okay. Were there ever any policies or procedures put in the in place in the event uh, for some reason that the executive director would have to leave that position, be it voluntarily or involuntarily? So we have something in place and we'll know what direction to take. Nothing? There, there Everything was, was just done once. Uh, once Mr. Kirkland left, right? And, and go back to a couple of things that you mentioned, Mr. Mr. Everson. There, there was an open meeting, uh, a regular meeting of the MPC when the vote was given on the interim director position as regards. It was to open? Was it was open. It was open meeting. It was a, a and motion voted. and voted. Okay. And it was later in executive session where it was discussed regarding the compensation of the new fourth position in the director. And then there was, it did go out into open session where they voted on compensation. So yeah, I have minutes of those meetings? Yes. Okay. Uh, you stated that uh, you're constrained by budget, by budget issues relative to your spectrum of advertising. Did, have you uh, placed an ad in the Times or the Sun or the Forum? Uh, yeah, we, we, we've got some options. Uh, I mean, I don't think they're going to be no thousands of dollars. I'm just saying, you know, what say charity starts at home and spreads abroad. I was, I was very surprised oh. at, the, at the quotes we've got. Okay. $779 from the Street okay. Times. Okay. But yeah, when we're looking at a position like that, you know, we got we got to deal with that. Yeah. Uh, we, I, uh, okay, uh, uh, you all are familiar that the city as well as the parish appoint members to the MPC, right? Yep. Uh -huh. Are you asking and, me? Right. And, and we give uh, a little stipend. <laughs> uh, no, we do not get any money. Yeah. Well, we do. We gave you 159000 Me. 2010. Yeah, correct. And the Metropolitan Planning Commission. So okay. if you're getting stipend, I'll be looking for that job. All right. <laughs> Hang on. Let's let okay. Commissioner Epperson ask uh, questions. Okay, come on. But you offer me that we do give a little stipend, right? To the MPC? Yes, and we appreciate it greatly. Thank okay. you. Uh, then we got the master plan in. We did 171,000. I guess that's our share on getting that instituted in, in 2009, 2010, 228,000. Uh, three vehicles for the MPC in 2011, I think, uh, about 50,346 dollars. Uh, Mr. Bernstein, could you uh, could you come forward, please, sir? Okay, relative to the constitutional provisions or whatever statutes was put in place uh, regarding the commission's relationship as well as the cities with the MPC, uh, could you give us a little light on that? I called you and spoke with you earlier on it. Yes, um, 
or, yeah. or Miss Frazier, you know, whoever be prepared. Um, Pass it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, basically, back in 1962, the legislature authorized Caddo Parish and the City of Shreveport to create a Metropolitan Planning Commission to cover land use and planning within the city limits and the five-mile uh, planning belt outside of the city limits. That's what we have gone under since then. Uh, obviously, that was some time ago. It's back before Home Rule Charters. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, and um, the um, the current uh, the current act does um, provide for uh, appointment from both the co the city council and the parish commission of members for each one jointly appointed um, as quite a bit else with regard to the 1962 statute, but that's. Uh, I don't know what specifically you wanted to know, okay. Commissioner. I was, I was just trying to make sure of, of whatever the provisions were that gave us a level of responsibility in uh, helping them to carry out their functions. Correct. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, we had 1954, not 1962, but okay. that's all right. <laughs> Okay. So okay. I mean, we've always been. I mean, I'm not here to be adversarial. We we all need to work together. We, I mean, the MPC's kind of been like the redheaded stepchild, and I don't see that. I think we have a new group. I think we have a dynamic group. Uh, we have people now on the board from all um, different kind of businesses and jobs, and people that aren't um, influenced by politics. But just want a better city. It is there, and want to grow for you know we want to keep our kids here and um, and uh, grow our businesses here. Um, I'm in the medical business. Right. I, like I, I mean I don't have any anything to gain um, to putting somebody I know or anybody else on there. I want somebody that's qualified, and I think that's what. I truly believe I've been working with this group now three four years we just had two three recent appointments within the last year our boards changed it's a it's it's a different board and I think it's a more progressive and with that I'm gonna say that we want to work with you guys but you guys did appoint us and and a lot of us recently to do a job and we take that very seriously we don't get paid for it but it does benefit us and it benefits our, our city as a whole. So I want to work together with the city, with the parish. I think the board wants to do that, but we don't want to be, um, I don't know if I even should say that. We don't want to be inf influenced in a sense of a political. We don't, we took great strides in making this job description very detailed. And I, and I want to say, if thank we don't find you, anybody, thank you. That's the you've answered my question up to this point. Uh, my concern is uh, is to make sure that in the event that something comes up of this nature in the future, we'd have guidelines that are specifically and definitively spelled out. So we just have a roadmap we can walk straight through there again. I have not seen this this happen. We too want uh, I too want things to go forward, but I want things to be done. Uh, uh, correct and in order. Uh, my point is I feel that uh, with the, the relationship of the commission that we have with the MPC, uh, I don't know how the issue, uh, you know, come up where you got to get an, get an opinion, but uh, if we appoint board members, if we uh, provide some funding uh, uh, to help that organization, well, certainly we should be entitled, I think, to sit at the table to look at a, uh, a, a new director because this is basically a path that has not been traveled in the future. And I don't think that responsibility should solely go on the heads of, uh, uh, of you board members. We should have a seat at the table. That, that's my problem, you know. Of course, we can, we can work good, but what has happened here is we have seen a, something that, it, that has come along and it's caused a glitch in the road that we must address. But we just shouldn't just paint over and smooth over it but, uh, and let it be a one-sided faction. This is something that we all should participate in. 
Okay. You know, we need to look at, I mean, you know, we, we come up with qualifications, we, we add to them, but why weren't qualifications important 33 years ago? Or 25 years back, or 20 years. I'm not saying that's you, but what I'm saying is the reason that you are here today is because we have not done what we should have done 30-something years ago, and that's why I requested that you come here today. So we should have a seat at the table and put this thing uh, 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 down and walk it from the bottom up collectively. So that's all I have, sir. Well, Mr. Epperson, um, I want to say that um, I'm not here to say you shouldn't or should should have somebody at the table. I'm just sitting here as representing my board saying that they just wanted to see a legal opinion that if we if we if it is legally allowed to do that or not that's all we're getting i'm not sitting here saying no 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 i'm sitting here saying let's let's do this I understand right that. And we let's could do this right make that decision had we been in on, on on the entire process we may have could have answered that even without going for the an attorney general's opinion that's all i have Mr. chairman okay I think one of the, the main concerns is, is the time restraints on trying to get that opinion and uh, the hiring process and um, we're not trying to be adversarial. We understand that you don't get paid and it, what you're trying to do is for the betterment of our community. We still have some other commissioners on board and I know you've been here for quite some time so mm -hmm. just please please bear that bear with us. No problem. Uh, we're not trying to shoot the, the messenger so to speak. So Commissioner Thibodeau you're the next one on the board please. Yeah, <clears throat> Henry, I got a couple questions. I appreciate if you could just give me a direct answer. Yes, sir. In the night. Sound like a church. She's going to hang around Mr. Kirkland too long, huh? In, uh, I have been pretty direct. In, in the 1962 statute, <laughs> that gate, we, we were allowed, we being the city and the parish, to appoint and put together the MPC. All right, in that same statute, did it give the authority to the only to the MPC to uh, select and hire the director. Yes, sir. All right. Did it? Does it disallow um, having an advisory committee uh, to, to assist them in that decision? It, it does not address that one All way right. or the other. So, so at this point, at this point, it sounds like to me that. If we have if we have a seat at the table as commissioners or as a city, we're there on an advisory uh, status. That that the statute does not allow us. To they have, have to make the ultimate decision. The right. MPC has to make the final decision. And that's what I'm vote. asking. That's how the statute <laughs> sits right now. That's correct. All right. So we're probably not going to get anything different than that from the, or you're probably not going to get anything different than that from the attorney general. I mean, I, I, I know that it's all that's written in legalese where normal people cannot understand it, but I would hope that if that's what comes out of it, that the MPC employs or uh, is the one that uh, employs, hires the, the, uh, the director, but that others could be at the table as, it, you know, as an advisory committee, and, and maybe that's what we need to look at. I would also ask, uh, was there a cover letter sent with this? If I was applying for this job and asked for this job description, did you send you send a cover letter along, or is this all you sent me? That's just the job description. This is the job description. I didn't want to say nothing, but it looks horrible. Okay, because this job description says, Executive Director, Shreveport, Louisiana, Caddo Parish. It does not say what it's the Executive Director of. And, and I think, you know, part of the problem that, that the new members of the MPC have, as I see it, is you're, you're trying to create a whole new culture, which is what we're trying to get to happen. But, you know, the first thing as a function I would have had on this would be for the Director to come in and go over procedures and policies because right now my understanding is any meeting that you have whether it be a committee meeting a subcommittee meeting is should be an open meeting mm -hmm. and it should be advertised and there should be minutes made available 
So, uh, is would that be a correct statement, Henry? The one that would have to be an officially appointed committee that had a quorum at which official action was taken. All right, so if it's an official, so I mean, any committee had to be appointed. Right. Everybody wouldn't right. just show up there one day and say, hey, we're going to be a committee. So, so if they're official, they need, they need to advertise it, and it needs to be an open meeting, unless I guess it has to do with the two or three issues that allow you to have closed session. Right. All right, so if, if y'all aren't doing that now, that needs to start immediately. Yes, sir. Um, finally, you know, I'm in looking at these qualifications, it, it, talk, it doesn't say anything about UDC. Now, maybe the assumption is, is that anybody applying for this job would know what that is. I don't know. And the, the last thing I would ask is that you would consider, you being the uh, MPC, would consider lengthening the period that you would accept um, applications until such time as you get your legal opinion. And just as one commissioner, I don't personally see why our attorney or the city attorney could not give a, a legal opinion. That's what we employ them we for. And, and Mr. Tippett, we did ask the city and parish to, to give us. Oh, I know you he did. Started I, there. That's just a side issue, and maybe one of the things that y'all need to do is to is to have your own attorney. I don't think it's in our budget. <laughs> well, I, I'm saying that may be something that you want to consider because if you're not going to be able to get legal advice from the parish or from the city, then who are you going to get it's it from? It's a good point. I asked the same thing when we got the response back. I'm like, well, who do we go to then? Right. Right. Okay. And uh. I appreciate the hours that y'all spend because whether you're being paid or unpaid, it's it's, it's difficult. I know you're not paid. <laughs> okay, uh, let's please try to be brief as possible to move this along. I know this is a very important issue, but we still have several commissioners on board and, and more adding every minute. So, Commissioner Lynn, you're next, please. First, thank you, Ms. DeMarteau, and thank you, Mr. Young, and thank you, Mrs. Cooper, for y'all coming today. And I, I appreciate everything that you do, and I do recognize that it is volunteer work. The first question is slightly removed from that, and that is that when um, Commissioner Lynch and Commissioner Escadade attended your meeting, I asked when were the citizen comments allowed, and I was told by I own Dean that y'all did not allow citizen comments unless it had to do with a specific um, case. And I ask that if you could please add to your agenda a point in time for people to do uh, just comments in general. Not you, we're not talking about this particular. No, we're not case. talking about this. Okay. Not yet. I was starting off with that one because this is this is the easy. This okay. is easy unrelated. And in case Didn't, you just wanted to say something about like how wonderful after the we're was. done, like before or after the anywhere, meeting or whenever, anywhere. stick it on there anywhere. Okay. Okay. We have it before the the city council yeah, has I'll it after. It. Put it on there anywhere you want. Can I can I say something? We are really trying to kind of focus know, on the executive director. Uh, that, We've had a lot of discussion about open meetings issues that appears to be some some issues that y'all need to look at. I don't know who y'all's attorney is. I think that they use the parish attorney or the city attorney. Is that correct, Henry, when they can? It, it depends on whether it is a parish or city case. I think you need to get with, 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 with probably the city attorney or the parish attorney and go over those issues as far as, far as open meetings. Okay. Because it, it seems to be that some of this stuff is not being followed correctly. So hopefully we can move forward. And I'd like to try to stick with the issue of the executive okay. director if we and can so we can finish this meeting today. Everything else is on that. Um, and I would like to concur with what Commissioner one commissioner said in reference to um, we don't want to repeat the same mistakes that we did 26 or 33 years ago and that's why we're here today and that also another commissioner spoke of we don't need to be held up on five thousand dollars in reference to finding the best person for the job um, in regard to uh, mr. Andrews mr. Colvin and yourself going over the executive director list Will every single person that qualifies by these standards be brought to the full board, or will you be filtering and off people on top of that? Well, well, our job was to filter through and take the top quali 
qualification, uh, the ones that are top best qualified. And so <laughs> people that actually meet this won't necessarily make your cut list. I hope we have enough. I don't. I hope we have enough applic applicants that we can get down to five or six. That's that's a scary statement that you might not. Um, have. Are you insinuating that you might not have enough applicants to make five or it's, six? It's too early to tell yet. Okay. Um, have you done an outreach to Baton Rouge, who Baton Rouge, Louisiana, who recently? searched for an executive director of their Metropolitan Planning Commission and I think they had 75 applicants um, I, heard, I heard 60 but that's good okay. um, yes we just I mean I got their 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 job description um, you know in our meeting that's coming up um, tomorrow we're asking I w that's on my agenda to, to ask to see if you know where they advertised can you get a list of the people that applied there I'm gonna ask to reach that. out to them directly right okay um, that's it thank you thank you for your service you're, and thank, you're welcome. thanks all of y'all Commissioner Williams chairman I think many of the questions that I had I think Commissioner Epperson and Commissioner uh, Mike Thibodeau answered the question of several questions regarding the statute statute of limited that allow us to appoint and dissolve boards and I think that was answered very clearly uh, we can't let our past upset our future uh, we are in a, uh, uncharted territory in regard to hiring a new uh, executive director however I guess basically what's been going on years is favoritism and nepotism and buddyism and what we're trying to do is cut all that out and everybody come clean and all hands on deck but I do feel you do uh, apply to the ethics like all of them do because you're a public body. We do. And uh, some of the things been saying, I don't think we've been tracking and following the ethics policies because we haven't been open to the public and we can't continue to go in that direction. So in, to help us navigate this into the 21st century, I hope that, uh, that we don't really need an attorney general opinion, that we're gonna have an advisory board that has no authority. And I do feel that's something that both bodies can do without having an attorney general opinion. Because if that's the case, we need to have an attorney on general. Can we do what we do for, for the MPC body? Dissolve you or give money to you? So I feel at this point that because the stage of the game regards to the 31st attorney general opinion, that we should move forward and allow the uh, members to uh, allow a advisory committee to come on board and have no, really have no authority but to advise. Because uh, this uncharted turret is never we've done before. We say we want to work together and be inclusive. Well, We've been working together to give enough resources to fund the MPC and do the appointment. It all appears that we don't need an attorney general to come in our business and tell us that we can appoint an advisory board to give advice. So I would ask that, um, that, to, that, that the board would consider uh, an advisory capacity of uh, council representation and the commission representation only as an advisory capacity. And I don't feel it takes an attorney general to do that because we do have policy and procedures we do, need, we do need to take the doubting and the guessing game out of it. And I believe that we do have a, uh, we do have policy that we need to follow. And I think there need to be a national search committee. And sometimes you might have to hire outside people do inside work to take the politics out of it. But I, I just want to commend the energy uh, and the excitement and enthusiasm that the MPC now has. Thank you. Uh, I think we are, we're moving in the right direction with all the new exciting new uh, plans we have master plan the uniform code and I do feel we can do it but we must do it together uh, we can't uh, uh, we got to do it where we invite <coughs> really invite the council and the commission who want to volunteer as an advisor they not gonna get paid to do that uh, so I think it's something that we should do and to work together to make this city a better place so we all can prosper and grow together so I would ask that this body would take back the comments that's been made today to you to your board to your executive committee to allow the uh, city council and the parish commissioners to serve in an advisory capacity, squash the attorney general opinion, and let's move forward and let's get this behind us. And also, I would ask that in the negotiation package for the executive director, uh, uh, I mean, Saturday <coughs> will probably be discussed privately, I, I believe, in regards to. Uh, I think we advertised us, I think we advertised salary, didn't we? A range, 80 to 100. And Nine, we, we did advertise it's, it's 90,000 to 120,000 a year 
What's what's the going salary right now for, for, for current? One hundred one. No, you want Charles? Charles, how much he was? I don't think you're going to do this. Yeah, that's a sure. 126 yeah. without yeah. benefits. Don't want no guessing game. I mean, is that? 126. And did he have all these qualifications? Uh, did he have all these? No, but we know yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, guys. No, sir. But I hear again, we, we want to uh, don't let our past upset our future. We want to move forward. And I believe what's been said today by all of us, you see our concern is to work together. But we don't want to be in the dark. We want to turn the lights on where we all in the room working together. I believe we can do that, and I hope that the Attorney General uh, opinion would not have to come in and do what we can do for ourselves, because we're all competent and intelligent. We can make good, wise decisions. So I would allow this to move forward, and this song has never been done, to be inclusive and work together, and I believe we can do that. I hope okay. we will. I appreciate that, and, and I've kind of got to, we've been advised by the attorneys to get outside counsel. Okay. So what do we do with that? All right, Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I got a different angle of questions to ask. Um, basically, basically um, on the who does the NPC report to? That's a million questions. Who does the NPC? You need a, the state. Reports. <laughs> who do you report to? Basically, who do you report to on a issue that you? can't resolve, who do you report to? I mean, we report to the residents of Caddo Parish. Everybody reports to somebody. Who do you report to? Their appeal case. Problem number one. <laughs> I know. Uh -huh. it's not it's not one, they need money. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows. The city is a parish. Oh, uh, hang on. Please, let Commissioner Johnson have I, the floor. I need them to answer that question because if that's a if that's a discussion that nobody knows, then that's problem number one. Well, I don't I don't think I quite understand your question. Did, we're it's here. To somebody. We're uh, we're here to make decisions on zoning and ordinances and stuff for the, the greater good of the public. Um, so you feel you report to nobody? And that you're here only to do a job to satisfy. Okay, uh, what is our, our MPC board governed by? Or we're an independent gov board that's governed by the state. Right. We're not governed by the city or the parish. It's by the state. Okay. Who do we serve? That's it. That's it. We serve the public just like you do. Okay. All right. I'm just, I guess your terminology is confusing to me. No, it's, it's, it's really straightforward. The, the parish appoints four people to the board. The city appoints four people to the board. And then there's one person appointed jointly between the two, right? Is, is my understanding that's okay. correct. You mentioned about um, qualifications. Uh, what are some of the qualifications to be a board member? I, I can just speak for myself. Um, as I'm a, a, a local business owner for the past 20 to 21 years, I'm active in the community. Um, I have two children that go to school here and, and one in college now. Um, okay. That's, just, that's to, just to public interest. That's good. Now, you also mentioned about not having the influence of politics. Everybody that's appointed by the city and by the parish and that joint person is influenced by politics. I mean, you have politics in everything, even at your job, at church. Uh, daily life you have politics so I guess we're just not elected that's what I'm saying no it's not elected but you are appointed by a governing body that governing body reports to the people who elected them to be in office so if you're gonna make changes to uh, zoning issues or you're gonna affect people's lives on zoning issues and this body and City Council appoints you guys because they thought that you had the mindset to do the right thing and to follow the, the laws that are established, then when you go out and get an executive director at a courtesy that the parish and the city did a resolution to say, well, hey, we want to be involved in the process of hiring a executive director. Well, to me, and this is my opinion only, okay. that y'all have ignored the resolution because first you had a subcommittee meeting you formed a subcommittee first then you had a subcommittee meeting then last year I'm quite sure you knew that mr. Kirkland was retiring 
So therefore, you knew you had to do a job search for a candidate for the position. In order to do that, you have to budget in order to do a search. There was no budget involved in doing the search of enough money to me from what I saw that you called out earlier. So therefore, that part was missed out. The job description, if you would have had some members of this body and also the city council involved in that, then we could have had some more things added to this as an executive director so that it meets what we need, it meets what the people that elected us to, to serve input into that committee. So now, it's just not like, we're just not seeing this for the first time. Um, and to say that, you know, you was going to stop accepting applications on March 31st, and we just saw it today, that only gives us about four, four, uh, 30, 40, 35 days to actually get this into somebody's hands that we might think that might be qualified. My next question, if you mentioned earlier, if somebody does not meet all these qualifications on there, are they still going to be hired as executive director? Or could they still be hired as executive director based upon the subcommittee meeting? Because you put all these qualifications in there for a reason. So basically, if you come up with nobody who meets these qualifications. I'm, I'm one, of the, one of the three in the subcommittee, if it ends up that way. I would, uh, you know, and I can only answer for myself. And I would say, no, I wouldn't hire them if they didn't meet the qualifications. Okay. But that's one out of three. Okay. So based upon the city giving you funding, the parish giving you funding, and we make all the appointments to the board, y'all will have the majority if you do do an advisory committee that why wouldn't you agree to that instead of ignoring it and going through the process of an attorney general's opinion, uh, getting outside legal attorneys, I mean, all that is all that going on, but then at the same time, you're still moving forward and getting an executive director. I'd like to answer those questions. First of all, I want to clarify something. The subcommittee was formed way before the resolutions were ever even brought to our attention or given to us. Okay. We, so, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing sneaky going on here. We're just going on as business is, is what we're supposed to. So the sub, subcommittee was formed. We didn't know. I didn't know when... Um, Mr. Kirkland was actually resigning. He's been saying he's going to resign for several years. I did not, I didn't even know a date until, um, I don't know, I think Mr. Mr. Lynn was asking me what's the official date. And I didn't even know the date till January. And I think he resigned January 14th or something. So, I mean, there's nothing, I mean, it might look suspicious, but there's nothing, there's nothing going on other than we're just trying to do our job as best as we can. And we don't, I don't have a, as a board, we just got a legal opinion if we could even put you on or not push or, or keep you, keep you off or not. We're just trying to get an opinion. It all started out trying to get an opinion. How it got to the attorney general and all that is, we thought we were going through the right channels by going to the city and the parish attorneys. And they're the ones that recommended the outside opinion. Ms. DeMarco, let me, let me, let me stop you there. Do you have any more questions? That's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll pass up now. Okay. Um, John, Commissioner Escada, you haven't spoke yet, so we're good to you, okay? Hello. Be nice. I will. I appreciate all your time. <laughs> I'm going to be as nice as I can be. Uh-oh. I'm going to kind of try to be. You said a while ago that you were governed or by the state. Those were your words. Is that a true statement? No. It's a creation it's the creation of the legislature. Yeah, well, okay, so you're, then that's the state. That's one of the same state. Well, so are we. We, we you know, right. so are we. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we have, we have that in common. But if the same thing, you don't report to the state, you don't answer to the state unless you screw up. I mean, unless somebody cries foul. So there's really no reporting, right? Okay, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you stuff you don't know. Okay. Um, Let's put this. I think we need our attorney for this. You pass. No, you don't. No, no, you don't need. You, you, the the board. You, your members are responsible for passing annually the MPC's budget. Correct, based on the appropriation that this body and the city of Shreveport provide to you. Is that correct? 
Yes. Staff presents the budget. Or did you not all adopt it? There's the budget committee, and they look at it, and then we adopt it. Yes. The whole body adopts it. Yes. So you adopted a budget without. We approved a budget, I guess. Approved, adopted, mm -hmm. same thing. Okay. You can amend it. You have the power. Y'all are in control. You hire, you fire, you say yes and no. We're can... meeting tomorrow, I know. Uh, uh, no, no, listen, you're not getting to where I'm going at. So you passed a budget and you don't have the resources to advertise a position that's vital to this parish where you know you need the resources. So we, how, how did that budget get passed if that's tight? I'm just curious. Because you see, I want to, you know, one of your members made a statement to me once, and I believe this, let us do our jobs. And I want to let you do your jobs. But let me tell you something. You know, I've been around a long time, maybe too long. You don't know everything and neither do I. So how did the body pass a budget so tight you don't have any wiggle room? You don't know. I wasn't chair at that time. I wasn't involved You don't get the budget, you get a vote on it. I'm not picking on you, you get a vote on it. Well, well, like Stephen did, I have to say, and Stephen did uh, uh, talk about this. We were asked to cut it by 5%. Then we got in there, and I was at that, actually, at that meeting, and it looked like it was going to be approved and all that, and then we came back and we were $35,000 cut. Okay. Uh, so, now, yeah. that's, with that said, I was just made aware of this uh, this, this week, okay? I, I, called, I called a meeting to be able to look at this. I think it's important, too. It's very important. I want it to go on the monster and career builders and everything. I want it out there because I want to have 60 or 70 or whatever ap applicants. We want as many as okay. possible. Well, I'm going to help you. I have a, have a suggestion for you since you have the money. You take your top management people, however those are in the MPC, top administration, furlough them a week. You got the money? <laughs> I want the job? Tough decision. That's a solution right there. Y'all can do it. Just letting you know. Um, now, what concerns me is I realize that our, our resolutions passed by both bodies may have been the way they were worded, okay, may brought into question somebody's little scheme in mind that, hmm, wonder if this is legal, and that's fine. So we go and we ask our parish attorney, the city attorney, to uh, in, investigate it, and they punted, which doesn't surprise me. You know, they punted. You know, it's all whole hands and sing kumbaya. So you went to the AG, okay? We so haven't the, we haven't gone there. Okay, the AG is he's going to give you an opinion, not to force the law. He's going to give you his opinion. He's an attorney. He's going to give you his base comment. for every one attorney I find tell you one thing. I find somebody and pay him tell you to tell you different. Okay, that's just that's just simple. So we punted, and now you're in no man's land. Well. Also, just to point out as a fact, this body and the city council, this body unanimously passed a resolution asking for a seat at the table. This body, which by state law, enabling legislation with the state, formed the MPC, funds the MPC, funds its members, which can, and I have to have an attorney on this, dissolve it, defund it, reinstitute it, do whatever it wants to do. Now realize there's a certain sep uh, separation because you don't want undue political influence within a district based on your decision. But I'm, we're not talking about that. What we're talking about is the most important position, probably one of them in this parish, and its future long term that impacts everybody. And we're the funding source for that. And I find it difficult to live with the fact that there's no way for us to participate in the process. In fact, I don't buy that. Uh, you go and undergo annual ethics training? Yes, sir. Y'all all do? Okay, we do too. Then then I'm sure you're aware, well, maybe you missed the part in there, to where when you're having your um, meetings, your subcommittee meetings and all, that, uh, Mr. Chip, that's right, all that's got to be public meetings. When you went into executive session to discuss Mr. Jane's interim salary, that was a violation of the open public meetings law. The only way that would have been not a violation if it was a personnel matter or something. His salary is a matter of public record. So I suggest y'all brush up real hard on those laws. Maybe the attorney general needs to figure out, you know. We had an attorney in the room. I said maybe the attorney general needs to <laughs> not only look at whether this is permissible or request, maybe you need to look at whether or not, you know, maybe I'll take action where you shouldn't have. It could be all null and void. You see the train reaction I'm getting at that could possibly happen? This is what I think we can do to solve this, okay? And you don't need to get an attorney's general's opinion. You don't need to get an attorney's opinion. Because I know this. I believe this. 
I think the city council and this commission, all we're saying is this is important. We don't want the process hijacked. Not that we want to hijack it. We don't want to hijack it. We can't prevent that or we can't observe if we're not in the room. So you can name, honor the resolution, honor that request by making a counter offer, which you probably could have done if you'd have spoke to one of us before you get the attorney's punt in the ball and the AG's opinion just said, hey, you know, how about this? We'll honor your request, two members each, advisory, ex officio, whatever. Then we got people in the room, we know what's going on, we feel comfortable about the decision you make, how the process was done, and funding you in the future. It's pretty, pretty simple. That could have solved all of this mess. And I'm really surprised because you're smart, and all three of the ones of you guys are here smart. Somebody didn't figure that out a long time ago. But anyway, that could solve that. So imagine if you take that to the board. And I imagine if you expanded your agenda tomorrow to bring that up to the board instead of, you know, dragging this thing out, a bunch of this stuff could go away. I think all the city council wants, all these members wants, is to just be in there, listening, following the process, seeing what's going on. But that's all. We don't have to vote. We don't have to do anything. So. And, and that's not what was asked in the resolution. I, I stated that earlier, Thank that you. the resolution was vague. I want to clarify that. But okay. also, that's what I'm saying. Well, since you, since you fired back, well, all I'm saying is <laughs> could have read it, and I'd have read it and said, well, okay, they obviously want to participate. We obviously have a vested interest. It's like Siamese twins. They're the lungs. We can't breathe without the lungs, okay? So if they hold their breath, we're dead. Somebody should have said, let's find a way to make this happen rather than find a way to not. That's, right. That's all I'm saying. Okay. And you know where we are in the process. Pardon me? We're, you know where we are in the process. It has not gone to the attorney general. I know where general you are in the process. And that doesn't, okay. I don't want to go back on time. I think I, I have no problem with these qualifications. You know, other than the fact that this, nobody currently could serve. I, I don't, it, it, that's my last question. Like, does, does somebody like Mr. G not get benefit of being in, the, I mean, how far off, not to drag his resume out, I mean, how far off is he? I don't, I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Well, can't. I can't. I don't. I'm not supposed to. Well, she look at okay, that. she doesn't know. I don't know. And thank you. If I'm going to screw up, let me screw up. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Baker. Um, what I want to know. Are you can, uh, yeah, Stephanie Jarge, Commissioner Baker. Um, is it any way that this board can do something else? I mean, this is. I look at this and I view this position as a very important position for the Cattle Parish Commission. commission. I, I understand it is for the City Council as well, but I'm only speaking for the Commission today. And this is a very important position, and, and, and I think that this board needs to do something. What board? To, you talking about that board? The Cattle Parish Commission Good. board needs to do something to, first of all, get this, this, this uh, qualifications they're so broad, they don't tell a whole lot. I mean, and it's not really asking for nothing but just a person to be an executive director and oversee a department. It's not going into details, you know, and saying other stuff and things that we're looking for them to do. And I know several of us as commissioners had some ideas of what we were looking for in an executive director, and I don't see the qualifications on this sheet. So I think, I mean, I'm like Commissioner Thibodeau, I think, brought it up that First, this needs to be redone, and it needs to be more detailed. And then, this commission board, uh, somebody in authority, needs to make some decisions on this person coming into this position because, and I'm not saying anything against any of you all as NPC members, but I think that we need some stronger decisions and some stronger people making some decisions on who is going to be in this position because it's a very important position I mean and if we as a board are ones that have to to, to entertain uh, some of the issues that the MPC deal with then I think that we need to have a decision on who's going to be in this high seat and if we going to be left out with who's going to be in this executive director position then I'm like Commissioner yesterday we don't need to be funding MPC and we certainly don't need to be entertaining any zoning issues or anything else that comes before us that's passed on to us from the MPC if we can't make a decision in, in who's going to be in this position because right now I don't I just don't see it. I don't even see you all being able to pick a strong person or planner or anybody that can step up and be a little bit higher than what we had 
with these qualifications listed on the front and back of this sheet of paper. And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not, there's nothing against any of you all. But I just don't see it. And I'm, I'm just hoping that somebody can do something. I mean, I, I hear you, Ms. Ms. Baker. Um, first of all, we did include the city's uh, city HR director and was, was advised to, to not make it so specific because it would rule, it would rule too many p applicants out. And the specifics we wanted are going to be drawn out and asked in the interview. So, I mean, we're not leaving out specifics. We're going to ask direct questions or whomever, the board, whoever the board is. I don't have a decision on that. Whoever this subcommittee is, is going to ask those direct questions and, 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 and drill down to see what their knowledge base is and what their experience and what they've done. And that comes in resumes, too. So I, I know you're worried about the generalness of the, the job description. It was... It, it was tough and it was tough to to get it to a level that we could post and get out there and not weed out some really good uh, qual you know qualified applicants so the specifics will be asked Commissioner oh, Lynch okay let me get back to um, and, and then I'm gonna be through the five percent cut what, what what's the genesis of that Stephen let me ask let me ask let me ask Stephen what's going on here. The five percent cut. What was the genesis of that? Was that a something when we, from when the, we from prepare the budgets every year? Yes, we go through from the city. Yes, we. Were, yes, and we didn't we didn't quite get to that number, but we we ended up cutting. So that was for their appropriation that they made. Yes. Okay. Yes. That it's they, it's based. It's yes. It's based off of their amount. So right. we had to cut that much out of, of their subsidy amount. Okay. Yes. And then the thirty-five thousand dollars that you that was also out of that amount. <laughs> was that included in the five percent, or in addition to the five? That's an addition to. I think we ended up. I think. Uh, okay. And so you said the thirty-five thousand that came as was that because of the that came out of the director's salary? Did you say? It was very specific. Yes. Okay, because and the rationale that we were given is that the, the council understood it was going to take some time right. for that replacement to take place, and it, right. if so if a, a candidate was being considered before that, they would try to find some so funds to put cut, it back. So it's a cut, but it's not really a cut because you're not paying the money out. I mean, if the person was there, they'd be getting a check every two weeks, a month. I don't know how y'all pay, but but they're not there. Right. So it's not really a, I mean, it's a cut, but not really, it shouldn't impact your bottom line is what I'm saying. Okay. So I really don't want to hear any more about that, about this cut, because it's not really a cut. And let me ask you, um, on the, um, you're serving as interim director now, right? Yes, ma'am. Do you remember what your increase was to go to interim? I remember the amount. Yeah, it's um, <coughs> from, that was part of the impact on that budget. It was from um, 60, 69 to uh, 69.5 to 105, I believe. 105? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Mr. Kirkland's was budgeted at 126. Okay. Um, so, the, okay, when do, when do you all, so that's basically almost $30,000, okay? When do you, when, when did you all project that the new director would be in place and pick up salary from, the director's salary from what time period? We looked at the possibility of being a six. Yes, I did look at that. About July, you think? Mm hmm. Okay. That's what we looked at. So, starting in July. Okay. Um, I, I think I think you all can find the money. <laughs> let me say that. I, let, I don't care where you move it from, y'all can find the money. 
Because it's like they found this $30,000, they can find the money to do an adequate search. And, um, and I hope, as commissioners have expressed, that even if it's an advisory capacity, that both uh, bodies will have an opportunity to, um, you know, to participate. Uh, I, I would say probably the majority of the members of this body uh, went uh, went out to support the uh, master plan, the UDC, um, appropriated, you know, well over a million dollars. Uh, for both, in addition to the to the appropriation to the MPC itself, yearly appropriation, and I'm just not really understanding uh, what seems to be the pushback uh, from from us continuing to work together, and I think that uh, some of I guess what the surprise is, because everything's been kind of rocking along, uh, you know, cooperatively and collaboratively. Now, I know we sent, you know, a couple of commissioners over there um, and, uh, to work on the MPC master plan committee and that kind of thing, and I hope that didn't influence you all when it came to this, because sometimes they take their medicine and sometimes they don't. So, um, so I'm just hoping that what we've been able to establish since 2009, 2008, you know that we can continue to do that without you know any pushback and and if there were some specific concerns other than you know is it legal well it's I don't even know where that came from um, but I think there is a path to us participating and I would just you know strongly suggest that you all Figure out what that path is, and uh, and let's let's move on and try to get the best person. Thanks, Miss. Thank you. Okay, it, it just keeps growing, growing. We still have other commissioners, so please bear with me, <laughs> or bear with us, Commissioner Thibodeau. Hopefully, everybody can be brief at this time. This is about a third row, go around. This is the second. This is the second. I, I just want to say that unfortunately, the frustration that you've seen up here. Uh, you're probably the wrong person you just happen to be the person that the arrows are being shot at and you're probably the wrong person to be up there yeah. uh, it's obvious to me that as members uh, especially if the newer members of the MPC were giving little or no education on what your job was and uh, the the planning and the, the procedures that have been carried on uh, over the the years and the culture has not uh, evidently been challenged and uh, so I don't really put much blame on the new guys uh, I just but, but I do hope that as part of the new person's job that all this mess could get straightened out because if not unless Jesus Christ applies for the job you don't have a shot for the new director <laughs> to be worth the going wow. and I don't think Jesus is applying for that job yeah. Appreciate your comments. Commissioner Bowman. I'm going to keep, keep it brief. Uh, <clears throat> Ms. Demetor, I want to thank you uh, personally for your time and work and for being here today and mm -hmm. providing what information that you can provide and mm -hmm. continuing to work beyond this. But I also want to just make a suggestion if I could. <coughs> I know Commissioner Epson mentioned about um, have we done any advertisements locally? And I just think. Um, it's good for us to look outside, of course, the green new, but that would be a good avenue still. You never want to forget the home people because even locals can spread the word out. Like I have a lot of friends who may not even be live here, but people who may have qualified that live across the country can um, look at it. Like for the street for a sign of times and and if you could monster.com. Okay. That's right. Hopefully this is the last one, Commissioner Escaday. Okay. I would uh, just like to thank Leah for all of her service. I know how hard you work, and, and trust me, this lady works hard, not just at the MPC meetings. Uh, and I just want to make the point to everybody that, it, you know, where we are and how we got here is all irrelevant now. Yeah. Where we go from this point. And that if they find they lack the resources mm -hmm. to uh, properly right. seek a candidate, 
for this job since between us and the city it is our baby mm -hmm. you know and as much as I don't like spending money we may have to come up mm -hmm. with the funds to allow it to be done right it's too mm -hmm. important to poor boy it and screw it up mm -hmm. and, and I don't know I can't speak for everybody up here but if it gets to that point then you know mm -hmm. I'm all for considering giving you the resources you need to make sure that the thing gets done and gets done right thank you Appreciate it. Miss DeMarto. Okay, I'm 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 in. I'm calling for the question. President <laughs> <laughs> here. Uh, I'm gonna try to be short and sweet and just hash things, okay? So I think you need to sure. take a couple things back. Number one is we really need to look at the, those public records and the open meetings law and the way you're conducting some of those issues. So, number one. Number two, um, the money issue. Um, obviously, this commission would at least consider some help. To help fund this process and number three I think the point was made and it was made over and over again that pursuant to the statute um, we realize that we can't tell y'all who who to hire but I think if we were able to have quote a seat at the table yeah. and be an advisory yeah. position yeah. with a couple of members along yeah. with the city of Shreveport just advising you know along this process MPC would ultimately make the decision based upon your um, subcommittee and the two advisory committees. Maybe this stuff would get worked out, and um, y'all could probably take care of some of this tomorrow since y'all meeting by, like Commissioner Escudero said, if y'all properly expand the agenda and uh, hopefully we can. In, in, I have in to the, see if it was advertised because I won't have it if it wasn't. <laughs> Do what now? I see. to see if it was ever my meeting was advertised right. for tomorrow. I understand. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> that is true. So they don't have. If it wasn't, it's going to be postponed okay. till another day. <laughs> and, and I and I would just simply say thank you, thank you for coming today, uh -huh. uh, for your comments and your patience with all of us. I know that a lot of people talk to you and uh, don't take it personally because uh, you're doing a good job. Thank and like you. I said, you're not getting paid anything. And I know ultimately you what you want is what's better for the community, and that's what we all want. So thank you for being here today. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next item, Mr. Clerk. Is that all, yes, Dr. Sir, Wilson? Yes, sir. Thank you. Next, we move to communication committee reports. Right. Okay, Commissioner Williams. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, inform you that we do have a, a juvenile justice committee regarding uh, a request from the juvenile justice department regarding a social worker. And I think Ted Cox and the, the several of the staff is here to discuss is that. Ted here? I don't see Ted. Yes, Good. sir. Okay, I got gotcha. you. And then also, also uh, to thank Commissioner Lynch and others. Uh, for uh, informing us about it, an expungement program they have in May, Cook County, regarding uh, a second chance opportunity for uh, most old offenders who get uh, don't have an opportunity to re-enter the workforce uh, because of their records. The hope we can look at putting people back to work. A lot of the things, Kitty is crime they did, they did when they were a teenager, and he's still in the record. Right. But sometimes we're giving them limited ability to be able to get a job. So hopefully we can look at this program also in our committee and see what we can do to do it here in uh, Cattle Parish. And that also would be explained in the committee as well. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, um, Commissioner Thibodeau? Yeah, we had a special projects meeting today uh, in regards to the bond issue. Um, and it was it was determined, uh, there, were, there seemed to be some commissioners who were interested in presenting some individual capital projects that uh, could be put into the bondage. So what we decided to do was on March 7th at 1 o'clock, we'll have a, another committee meeting for a bond issue. And if you have a capital project, and I, I emphasize a capital project that you might want to be considered uh, in the bond issue, that would be the time to uh, present it. And for the sake of, uh, of time, before you include it, please have an idea of what the cost would be and also include, uh, be sure that it passes legal muster before you present it to the committee. So, uh, When is that due by? It, uh, well, you, you're going to probably need to uh, get with Ms. Fraser before March 7th. Because that's when you've got to have it. Because that's okay. when it will actually be presented. <coughs> And I would hope that by that time, if you had one, that you would have made sure that it was at least legal 
for us to even consider. Okay. All right. That's it. All right. Um, anyone else? Commissioner Bowman? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. President. Animal Services Committee met earlier today and um, we discussed the marketing and opening of the shelter hours for Saturday, which is coming up next month. And we spoke with um, representatives of the PR persons from Vermillion and Pew as well. Um, as well as with the director and we just looked at personal things, uh, future things that we could do uh, possibly with social media, including Facebook. So that's pretty much it. Appreciate your time. Okay, uh, next item, Mr. Clark. Thanks for that president's report. Okay, a couple things. I'll try to be very brief. Uh, oh. Just wanted to let you know that uh, we did go to the African American Shreveport Bossier DeSoto Scholarship Award um, along with myself, Commissioner Lynn and his wife. Uh, Commissioner Cox, uh, Mr. Bernstein, and Mr. Grubb, and Dr. Wilson were there. And um, our parish attorney, Ms. Frazier, did receive an award for her participation in being the first, I guess it was just the first female parish attorney in Caddo Parish. So I uh, appreciate that. Thank you so much for coming. We also uh, attended, and I don't know if you're going to talk about this Thursday or not, but there was the Liber. Libercat, Libercat Technology um, yeah. uh, business that, op, that opened up or in the process of being opened up, Governor Jindal did come. Uh, 75 jobs will be <coughs> available. They're going to be making lubricants for uh, sports and uh, recreational vehicle uh, and paying about $46,000. So uh, that is in Commissioner Epperson's district right across from the former GM plant. I'm sure a lot of people saw that. Uh, it's a wonderful thing that's happening in our area. I did attend today. There was an announcement. Um, the Governor General was in Bossier, Shreveport, Caddo, Bossier yesterday today at the um, Cyber Innovation Center, accompanied by the name of CSC, is coming to the Cyber Innovation Center. They're going to automatically take up two floors in the current building and build an additional building. It's going to bring 800 jobs to our area with an additional 800 jobs uh, based upon that. Their starting salary will be $50,000. Obviously, this will have a big impact not only on Bossier, but us also over here across the river. So that's a great announcement that's coming about. Uh, the only other thing is that uh, myself, along with several other commissioners, will be out Thursday. I know Commissioner Johnson, the Vice President, will be out. So for somehow another, um, I tried to appoint Miss Baker since she was the, the previous <coughs> president. She's going to be out. So Commissioner Lynn is going to be running the meeting oh, Thursday. Oh my God! So uh, <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Williams, keep them straight for me. <laughs> Remember that uh, we do have the CC Antoine events uh, coming up this weekend. If any of you guys get to attend, I've spoken to Mr. Craig Lee and told him that several of us would not be able to attend because of being out of town in Washington. I'll tell you the state of Black Shreveport is the weekend as well. Yes. Okay. Uh, next item, Mr. Clerk. We know old business. We yeah. move to new business. Oh, we still got a quorum. Authorized introduction of order in summer 5387 of 2014 amend the budget of vestment revenues expenditures. So move to third. Second. And move and seconding. Please vote. Okay, that passes seven to zero. Next item. Authorized introduction of local assessment ordinance number 51 of 2014. Ordinance construction improvement of water line within the right of way of Fort Maggie Lane. So move. Move. Second. 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 Motion and second. Please vote. Yep, it don't say something about Jesus, so I guess he's right. <laughs> okay, that, that passes seven to zero. Next item. Authorized commission action relative to the hiring of the Metropolitan Planning Commission Executive Director and other related issues. I'd like to make a motion to reserve the right to address this issue, advance it forward to Thursday based upon information that I requested from the MPC. Okay. Have a motion and second to move this to Thursday. Can we please vote? What are we voting on? To move it to Thursday. Thursday and what is it? Um, the, the action on today. Well, he really doesn't have to specify until yeah. Thursday. Yeah. He's had some questions. He's going to see how they come about. Okay. All right. All right. Those are passes 7 to 0. 
Authorized special resolution of recognition of Mr. Stan, the record man, Lewis, to report business. Oh, move. Second. Okay. Are you getting these times? Yes, sir. You don't stand the man? Huh? I, I got the comment on that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we went head to head back in the day. I know you did. For selling uh, uh, I know what you were tickets saying. to all the countries. <laughs> We had, we had to boycott any concerts coming here so we could sell tickets. Wow. So we got that right. We made history. Hmm. They flew them in from Concerts West out of Washington, D.C. Had a taxi cab bring them from the airport to my house and see if we would let the concerts go on. You were right. All right. That's all I have. Thanks, folks. Still don't have you, Commissioner Jefferson, if you... Oh, it's not up. It's not up. Uh -uh, Raise your hand if you're sure. Is it? Not up. I got Q. All right, there it is. Go. Okay. All right, that passes 7 0. Next item. Authorized special resolution of recognition to Mr. Garland Jones. A move. Second. Okay, seconded by Commissioner Escape. Stan Lewis button. sold his business to Mr. Garland Jones. He was the first African American to own a music store, I mean, a record store after he sold it. Second. I will. I will. I was, I was right. the first. Let me get it straight. Okay. Future trend records and tape. All right. That's the old district doing it. That's right. All right. Someone has a vote. Okay. There we go. Pass the 7 0. Next, we have consent agenda. Move to so move. So move. This man is adjourned. We move. It won't be long with juvenile justice to me. It won't be long. It won't be long with this meeting. <laughs> Anybody want the LPC job? Are you on the job? We had a house. Where was it? Anybody? On Saturday Street. I don't have the box. Okay. We will have enough. I'll take care.